let's begin. So all of my all of my presentations are just code, so bear with me. Let's begin by implementing static if in C14. So all the code is available in this GitHub repository if you want to follow along. Uh, static if is a construct that allows to uh, choose at compile time a branch depending on a context Boolean predicate. There are some existing proposals. The first one was uh, this one, which had a lot of problems with scope issues and other things. After that, it got resurrected. And finally, in C17, there is a really good chance that we're going to get, going to get static if under the name context if, which will allow to uh, branch at compile time. The branches have to be parsable, but they will be not instantiated unless the predicate matches the correct branch. branch. So let's see why we want to use static if instead of um, specialization, for example. This, these examples are taken from this paper. And one idea, an idea is that static if is a lot more local than specializations. So and when you have to do something really small, like call a function depending on a predicate, it is much more readable and easy to think about. So for example, here we have a variadic recursion. This is how you would do a variadic recursion without static if. You need two functions. With static if, actually, you can uh, have a branch on the size of the variadic pack and you have everything into one function. So it's a matter of convenience and syntactic sugar. Another motivating example is, for example, um, using make unique. Sometimes you have some, sometimes some types that can be constructed uh, only with the uh, round parentheses syntax because of conversion issues. And sometimes you need the brace initialization, initialization syntax. So again, if you don't use static if, you would need enable if and two different functions. While with static if, it's much more readable and easier to reason about. It's much more localized. So we can actually implement a working static if implementation in C14 without macros and just using library code. This implementation was inspired by the following article and the comments on its Reddit thread. I think the first one to implement it, like I'm going to show you, was Paul Fultz the second, but all the information is on, is on these links if you want to be correct. So let's start with a simple example. We have four different types, which are represent some foods. And we have the banana and peanuts that can be eaten and the water and juice that can be drunk. And we can actually uh, use a context variable, variable template to um, basically explain the traits of these types. So our solid foods are banana and peanuts and our liquid foods are water and juice. If we have a consume function that takes a generic T, we can actually use static if to uh, match solid food or liquid food and call the corresponding function. So eat in case of solid food and drink in case of liquid food. If we don't match any of these predic predicates, we can uh, just call the else branch, which will print cannot consume. So the way this works is that, as you can see, we need to wrap the predicates into integral constants as they need to be inter in their own unique type. And this syntax here is basically um, a context per vari variable template from C14. And this is the type trait I just showed before. Afterwards, we do a chain of operations we repre which represent the branches. And in dot then, we pass a callback function, which is a generic lambda, where we take an argument and do something with that argument. It's very important that we use a generic lambda because this is actually a template and it enables a sphene to take place. So the branch only has to be parsed and not instantiated in the case of uh, the predicate not being true. This will allow us to actually call consume with all of our types and the only correct branch will be instantiated so that even if the type does not have the method we are trying to call, the code will compile and work as intended. So it's pretty, pretty useful and it, it's just a library implementation. So let's, let's see how we can actually implement it and how it works. Uh, let's begin by defining some utility macros analysis. This is a macro I'm really proud of. It's the forward macro and it allows you to avoid repeating the argument two times because you can just say decal type of the arguments of the macro and just pass them inside of forward so you, you avoid typing the argument two times. I mean. Then uh, we need to, some sort of shorthand notation for integral constant of bool. In C17 we'll have bool constant but I feel it's still a little too long. So we can define this bool underscore here and we can do even better with C14 variable templates and have a context bool um, integral constant instantiated with a value that we decide at compile time. So we can just say bool underscore v of some value without having to call uh, to instantiate it with the brace notation. 
the way we're going to implement static if, I just need to zoom out a little, okay, uh, is uh, by taking the integral constant as a, as a function parameter, and we will match that into a template, obviously. The static if function the, is the interface function and will return uh, an instance of a struct that will be specialized on true or false depending on the outcome of the predicate. So bear with me. What we're going to do is have two helper types. The first one will be static if impl, which will be returned by the interface function. And as I said, it will be specialized on the result of the predicate. So we have a specialization for false and a specialization for true. The second type will be a static if result that will be returned as soon as we find a matching branch. And the static if result will basically ignore any subsequent branch and just uh, overload the operator call so that we can actually access the, our matched branch. Let's see uh, uh, the implementation here. So if we are matching a false predicate after returning from static if, we have to ignore the then continuation because the predicate is false. So we return ourselves and keep going into the hierarchy of branches. Okay. If the else, uh, if we are if we are in a false predicate, the else branch has to be matched because the predicate didn't match. So we just jump into the else, and here we return a result because this is the branch we want to call. It's the first branch that we found that will match or not match our predicate. And the same for else if. Here we actually call static if again with the new predicate that has been specified into else if. If we didn't match any branch, so the predicate is false, and there are no else branches, we simply have to uh, overload the operator call with nothing, because we are, we are ignoring the call. The true implementation is similar, but instead of, in, of, of ignoring then, we ignore else and else if. And if we actually find the then branch, we return a static if result so that we can call the matching branch. The result inherits from our function. This is to allow the empty base optimization to take place. And it ignores pretty much everything except the operator call. And here we static cast ourselves to the function we want to call and for perfectly forward the arguments that were passed to the static if call. And that's pretty much it. That's static if in C14. Hope it is clear. And as you can see again, uh, let me explain how it works in our previous example. So the interface function returns a static if impl and it will be specialized on the result of our Boolean predicate here. If this is true, then this then branch will be instantiated and called because it will return a static if result and ignore all the rest of the branches. Otherwise, if it is specialized on false, so if this predicate was false, we will, we will ignore then and keep going through the hierarchy and find something that doesn't match our predicate. And then we will return a static if result and call the matching branch. As you can see, at the end of the call, we need to pass an argument that will be taken in from the lambdas so that we can depend on the argument and use finae to not instantiate uh, a non-matching branch. It is pretty, pretty complex at first, but as you look at the code, it's very simple conceptually. And there are some other examples here, but I think I'm running out of time. So, uh, you can find my implementation on this GitHub repository, but I strongly suggest you to use production-ready implementations. There is one in Boost HANA by Luis Dion, which is a fantastic metaprogramming library, and one in FIT by Paul Fultz II. So just grab one of those and use static if. I think we have time for one or two questions. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, just one comment. So we considered this forward macro too, but we abandoned it because basically it's too dangerous if you move code inside the lambda that captures by reference, suddenly uh, it will change the behavior of the forwarding macro because suddenly arguments that come by where you turn into references. So uh, we still stick to this that forward, but it's, it's uh, certainly practical. I would like to have it in the language in some way. Okay, I like safely. to see an example yeah. of that.